Let's go ahead and get the negative stuff out of the way. Okay. This is going to be a raw and real review of this game. After about 50, maybe 60 hours of playing. The combat in this game needs a lot of work, man. <laughs> it needs a lot of work. It's kind of janky. All right. Uh, but it's come a long way uh, from the previous alpha test that, uh, that I've been a part of. Uh, come a long way. And it's getting there little by little. With that being said, this game is the most beautiful MMO I've experienced in a long time. And I'm not talking about just in terms of aesthetics. Don't get me wrong. Games like New World was hella fun. Chopping down trees and fighting through lag. <laughs> but the premise of this game, just the foundation, because listen, it's early access, so it's going to be a lot of jank in there. But the premise of this game is one of the best foundations, if not the best foundation I've seen for an MMO in a long time. Now, with that being said, it will be up to the developers to continue to flesh this game out and make it as great as I think that it could be. But today, I'm not just going to tell you it's great and just not tell you why. So let's go ahead and get into this, okay? So first things first, we're going to hop on our stairway to heaven. Yes, we built these stairs, okay? This is not, this is not okay, uh, uh, a fabrication. Excuse me, the computer that I'm on is a potato, okay? Seriously, though, don't go to my Twitch page and look at those stats because that, that computer doesn't exist anymore. This computer is definitely a potato. But understanding that, uh, what we went ahead and did is built our little subsection up here in the mountain. Now... We're still working on it, all right? We didn't want to go too crazy because this is early access and we are, sorry, this is a preview and we only got five days. So we wanted to wait till things were more permanent. With that being said, I do want to give you uh, at least a small idea of the potential that you'll have to create and build the base of your choice. Now, with that being said, this is a community-focused MMO, means that entire civilizations will be formed by players, anywhere okay minus specific locations that you know are for pvp zones and stuff like that but entire civilizations will be grown from zero by players so this is the type of game where you'll connect and unite with others and form nations and fight against other nations or if you're just a mom and pop farmer that just wants to hang out in the in the cabins and leverage your goods for profit then that's your prerogative as well. And as you guys go through this game, the beautiful thing about this is you're able to experience this world any way that you see fit. So now we're going to explore the world a little bit, and I'm going to explain to you the other features that make this game what it is, okay? Now, if I could draw your attention, let's just get this out of the way right now. Let's just draw your attention right there to the bottom right side of the screen. The first time I recorded this video, uh, my face was actually covering, so I had to re-record it. But on the bottom right side, you guys will see Control 1, Control 2, Control 3, Control 4, and Control 5. What are those slots? Magic. Now, the way that magic works in this game is you have to, you know, fight bosses, gather recipes, so on and so forth. And as you craft armor that has magic attunement, it gives you access to spells. So for an example, there's a, uh, a, chess, a chess piece that comes with an AOE spell. Now understanding this, that gives you five extra spell slots to ultimately customize your build. Um, now customizing your build allows you to create the character that you want. Yes, there is character creation in this and customization. Now, whether you're going to be a spell flinging mage, a healer, a paladin, somewhere in between, or if you're just working on enchantments, those things definitely can come into play. Don't want to use magic at all? Don't. But how you play is entirely up to you. Now, let's talk a little bit about the PvE before we get into the PvP. Now, if I can draw you guys' attention to this screen here. This is my inventory. Uh, the UI obviously still needs a little bit of work, uh, but being that this is early access, you guys understand. When we get into the skills, these are all of the skills that are available. Okay, I'm not going to read through the list. You guys can see them. But understand that focusing on skills in this game is a lot more in depth than most games you've played in the past, unless it's like old school RuneScape. It's going to take some time. Why is it going to take some time? Because investing in your abilities, your skills, actually matters in this game. 
Meaning that if you want to be the most badass weaponsmith on the planet and you put in more time and you find the unique stuff that nobody else is willing to find, that means that your services and goods will be sought out by everyone on the server because they're going to need your help because not a lot of people are going to be willing to put in the time necessary to to excel to the level that you can grow these abilities to. So what this does is it essentially adds meaning to your journey as a crafter and or pve -er. Now, let's say you're not a crafter, but you're still just a PvE head. There's dungeons. People will be seeking you out to try to find specific things, uh, barter certain goods that people will need to craft magic items and magic spells. Um, you'll be going through these dungeons to fight bosses. You'll be fighting bosses in the overworld. You'll be farming. You know, all the good stuff that you guys are used to doing or want to do in an MMO while increasing your skills. Now, for my combat savvy folks. Okay, hold on here. Let me... Remember what button I need to press here. If we go back to the skills and we take a look over to the combat section, you guys can see that you have a variety of weapons that you can master. As you guys go through this, you'll start to see subtle increases in your ability. For example, for my bow users, you'll be able to shoot further, shoot faster, uh, be more accurate. These are things that you'll be able to acquire as you go through and are a necessity if you plan on doing any form of combat. There will be situations in this game where there'll be players that don't ever lift a finger uh, to raise a blade, but their crafting abilities will be insane because that's what they love to do. And there'll be players that won't even touch crafting ever, but their combat abilities will be insane because they've taken the time to invest in the weapon and the craft and the skills that they decided to focus on. So what this does is it creates value in terms of the time that you're exchanging in this game which is one of the man i swear um that's one of the biggest complaints that i've had with previous games that i've played where i just felt like my time wasn't respected right so now let's talk about how pve actually plays into pvp and how both sides can actually help each other now i mentioned already how pve works right you got dungeons you got all the stuff you got rare materials you got all kinds of craziness you can craft build so on and so forth now, how PvE works with PvP is there's a PvP zone on the map, okay? Not this map, okay? Because this game is ginormous. But there's five maps. This is one of the five. Now, in the center cluster, not this one, on the other server, you'll see these doors. Now, these doors actually take you to a place called Lioness. And the initial uh, variation of PvP in this game is a PvP essential server. Now, they are going to be releasing more forms of PvP, most likely castle sieges and stuff like that in the future. However, for now, they're trying to iron out the combat and get everything locked in before they start releasing new shit, which makes sense. So, when you get to this place, Lioness, understand that there are materials that your PvEers will need from these locations. So, your job as a PvPer is to group with your team, become the baddest motherfuckers that you know you can be, and secure resources that your civilization needs to advance. Simple as that. So for the first time in your life, being an asshole is actually profitable. <laughs> so what this allows you to do as a PvPer is contribute to your team. Long gone are the days like, oh yeah, let me just go grief some people because I ain't got shit else to do, okay? It's now you have purpose, right? The reason you're going to kick people's ass is because, hey, you want to take all their shit because when you take all their shit, it's going to help your people become stronger, advance more, stabilize the economy, advance the economy. And so all of your actions as a pvp -er now matter. As a pve -er, it's important that you have the skills high enough to be able to harness this equipment that your PVPers are going to be bringing to you. So in celebration of them returning with the materials that you prize so much, now your ability to craft because you're one of the only badass mofos on the server that actually have high enough crafting ability, you can then leverage those skills and also help your civilization grow. So... It's a very, very interesting dynamic that they've created between PvE and PvP that I think creates a symbiotic relationship between the two where players no longer really have to argue who's better than who because we're all fighting the same fight. Now, this opens up some tremendous opportunities for mercenary groups who just want to work for hire and loot that don't necessarily want to bother with the politics of being part of a civilization but really just want to do their own thing, right? 
This also opens up opportunities for crafters who are lone wolves who may ne who may not necessarily be any good at PvP, but can leverage all of the abilities and the time that they put into the game to make the materials and things that people need in order to be successful. Now, I'd imagine this development company is going to continue to expand on this as the game continues to grow and expand. And I think that this game is going to continue to get crazier and crazier and crazier. And if you don't mind, I'm going to turn around and run the other way. Excuse me, my computer's a piece of ass. That's why it's kind of lagging like this. But just imagine mount implementation, underwater dungeons, underwater crafts, legendary equipment, right? More spells, all right? uh familiars summoning you listen the list goes on and on and on they can add factions religions gameplay since nations are established by people by us by the players there's virtually no limit to the things that they can add to this tremendous tremendous world and listen, guys, I, you know, we've been playing. I'm not even a crafter. And I was just enjoying the, the feeling of being part of something bigger or greater than myself. And it's crazy because most guild or clans in most games really fail you on that aspect, right? Most of the time, you're just gearing up to do some kind of raid. And that's pretty much it. But outside of like raid functions or just kind of shooting the shit with each other in Ventrilo or Discord, uh, most, you know, clans that I've been in or uh, run or had a part of didn't give me that feeling of the actions and the time that I put in are benefiting the people that I love most, which is my crew, right? So creating this opportunity for players, I think, is really what's going to set this MMO apart from any other MMO that you play. And being able to create and build the city or town or house that you want or create the type of character that you want with your skills and all that jazz is just a bonus. So do they have a lot of work? Do they got to iron some shit out? Absolutely. But this is the strongest foundation I've seen for a game, well, ever. So listen... I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys right now, I'm probably going to put minimum 3,000 hours into this game, minimum. So it's a good time. Launch is coming on the 18th, so we're going to go wild. Uh, we're actually going to be putting out a recruitment video here pretty soon. We're going to be looking for like 200 goddamn people because you need that much, right? Because this is a very community-focused game. This is not a game for soloists okay unless you're part of a larger organization that you know can help you out but if you are a soloist um it's just going to take you a lot of time it's going to it's going to be pretty tough but outside of that though um this game i think is here to stay and i think it's gonna it's gonna do some big things and i'm excited to see what direction they take this but with that being said guys that's all i wanted to cover today i just wanted to make a little video from the bottom of my heart and tell you guys that this game is phenomenal and if you guys got any questions comments concerns definitely let me know in the comment box below and i'll be happy to assist and we'll see you guys in the next video peace